Hi, everyone, and welcome to Learn Neuroradiology. I'm Brent Weinberg. Today, we're talking about emergency imaging of brain tumors. This is the third in a series about emergent imaging of brain tumors. Today, we're going to talk about astrocytomas. We're going to take a look at some of the imaging features you might see in an emergent setting. We're going to focus on CT, and we're going to focus on how to craft your impression on a CT. So what kind of things do you need to report when you're reporting on a brain tumor in the emergent setting? So primary brain tumors uh, of the astrocytomas, they come in three grades. Uh, they go all the way from grade two to grade four. Uh, glioblastomas are a special subset of the grade four astrocytomas that uh, have that are IDH wild type. These are the worst uh, of them all. Some of these lower grade ones are going to behave poorly if they have certain molecular features. Uh, as you go down from top to bottom here, the enhancement tends to increase, the mass effect tends to increase, the edema and hemorrhage, so all of these complications tend to increase as you go from top to bottom down this scale. So now we're going to take a look at a case. We're going to look at a CT from a 42-year-old woman coming to the emergency department, not making any sense. Uh, so here we have some images from a CT. This is a little scrollable movie. I'm going to play through this for you so you can take a look as it goes through. So this is the CT she had at the time of her presentation. All right, so I'm going to go back and scroll through this a little bit just so you can see. And so I'm going to stop right here. What you can see is there's a lot of uh, edema in that left cerebral hemisphere, some of the basal ganglia, insulin, subinsular regions, kind of going down the temporal stem into the temporal lobe. Uh, so definitely looks swollen, expanded. We have to think like the possibility of tumor uh, exists there. Here are some additional stills from that. Uh, again, you just see a low density lesion in the medial aspect of the temporal lobe, kind of involving the basal ganglia and temporal stem there. Uh, so what you have is a low density mass there. It looks like it's in the parenchyma. It's in the tempora, uh, temporal lobe and insula. There's not really any hemorrhage, some mass effect, but it's not severe. So if you're in the emergent setting and you're thinking about what, uh, what your differential should be, you have to really be thinking about tumor or infection. You know, you might less likely think about stroke or metastatic disease. It doesn't follow a vascular distribution, so stroke is really not your favorite thing there. Metastatic disease, it's solitary. We didn't really see any masses there, but still a consideration. Uh, this person's going to need an MRI. They may or may not need an LP if there's concern for infection. So those are things you might think about. So when you're making your impression on this case, you want to describe this as an expansile, hypodense mass in the left temporal lobe, a differential including low-grade tumor infection, MRIs recommended, and that's going to give them everything that they need to know in the emergent setting. So let's move on now to the MRI so you can see what it would look like. Here we have a diffusion weighted image, not a whole lot going on, maybe a little hyper intense diffusion there, maybe a little artifact, but on the flare, you really get to uh, the meat of things here. You have an expanse out mass, you've lost the gray white differentiation there, is definitely, definitely expanded. Uh, here you see pre and post contrast, again, loss of gray white differentiation expansion of that medial temporal lobe there. Not much in the way of enhancement, maybe a tiny bit of enhancement there, but to me that really looks like choroid plexus kind of caught in the middle there. So enhancement, really not a major feature there. Uh, this is a case of a grade two astrocytoma. These are well differentiated astrocytic malignancies, about 10-15% of uh, patients with astrocytomas. They tend to be younger patients, third and fourth decades, 30s and 40s. They do tend to progress. They're treated with surgery sometimes combined with radiation, sometimes the radiation will occur a little bit later. Uh, the imaging appearance of these, they tend to be iso to hypo-intense gray matter. They're hyper-intense on T2. It's pretty rare for them to have some of these unusual features like cysts, calcification, or enhancement. Let's move on now to our second case. This is a case of a 32-year-old man, left-sided tingling and confusion episodes, now increasing over a year, now with a complete uh, left lower extremity sensory loss. Again, here I've got a CT for us to scroll through, so it's just going to play through here. We'll let you take a look at that. All right, so I can play that back here. You can see that the right cerebral hemisphere is expanded, and over here you've got kind of an ill-defined mass. In some areas the margins are pretty well-defined, others more ill-defined. Maybe in the center you've got a little bit of hyperdense material. Don't know if that's a little bit of calcification, maybe a little bit of blood products. Uh, up here near the top you've got like a little, little cyst formation. Uh, all right, so here are some additional images from that uh, CT. Again, you just kind of see those a little better. See those little components there, a little hyperdensity there. Maybe blood products, maybe a little, bit, a little bit of calcification there. Uh, so a little bit more complex than the tumor we saw in the other uh, in the other study. 
Uh, again, low density expands on mass. We know that's in the parenchyma. Here's the location. We see a little hemorrhage and maybe some cysts, uh, some mass effect, but it's, it's not severe. Now, when you're thinking about differential, it's kind of similar to that previous case. You're probably thinking about tumor or metastatic disease. Again, infection may be a little less likely in this case because of those complex features. You're not thinking about the viral infections like HPV quite as much. This patient is going to need an MRI, though, and so that's going to be the next step. So when you're dictating your CT, you want to describe what you've seen. So we've got a low-density mass, right basal ganglia, coronal radiata, cystic areas, and possible hemorrhage. Again, give them a differential. Try to put your top two or three, primary brain tumor, metastatic disease, and infection. And you're going to want to recommend that they get an MRI because that's going to be the next key step. Here we see the images from the MRI. We have a T2 here. Again, you see that mass there. And the T2, the margins are pretty well defined. Diffusion, pretty, pretty uh, iso-intense to the surrounding brain. Maybe some areas of, of low diffusion signal. Now here's our pre and post. Again, you see not much uh, on the pre-contrast, but on the post-contrast, little wispy areas of enhancement centrally, maybe where those areas of hemorrhage or uh, blood products were, little enhancement here inferiorly. This is a case of a grade three astrocytoma. These are the infiltrating astrocytomas that have areas of anaplasia, about 25% of astrocytomas, similar location to the grade twos. Uh, they, uh, ten they can also involve the brainstem and spinal cord. Again, a little bit less defined than those uh, grade two lesions, maybe you have some patchy areas of enhancement, but otherwise quite similar to the grade two lesions. For a final case, we're going to take a look at a 59 year old woman with headache and behavioral changes. Uh, here we have some images from a CT. Let me play this for you. You already see right away, we're seeing a lot more heterogeneity than we were seeing in the other cases, probably more mass effect. I'm just going to scroll back down through that. Uh, here you can see there's some areas of hyperdensity, probably representing some areas of hemorrhage. Here on this image, you see areas of low density, maybe some necrotic areas. You see intermediate areas that look mass-like. The frontal horns are completely distorted and displaced posteriorly, so quite a bit of mass effect. And you just see more of the same as you come inferiorly. So that's kind of what you're dealing, uh, dealing with on this case. And here you just see, again, some of those areas highlighted. The, the hemorrhage, you see mass going into the contralateral hemisphere. It's a pretty worrisome mass that you're dealing with here. All right, when you're describing the CT findings on this case, you want to describe this as a heterogeneous bifrontal mass. It involves the corpus callosum. You have areas of hemorrhage. You have severe mass effects. So this is a pretty bad tumor that we're thinking about. We're thinking about high-grade tumors. Other things we might think about, could this be a hemorrhagic metastasis? Maybe, but that crossing of the corpus callosum is so unusual. Could this be lymphoma? That is another thing that you think about when you're thinking about uh, you know, lesions that cross the corpus callosum. These are sort of butterfly lesions, so to speak. This patient's going to need an MRI, so we want to be sure to recommend that. So when we're dictating our impression here, we want to call this a bifrontal hemorrhagic mass. We want to say what features are involved, particularly the frontal lobes and corpus callosum, the bad mass effect on the frontal horns. We suspect a high-grade glioma. Our less likely considerations are lymphoma and metastasis, and you want to recommend an MRI. So this really gets down to like the gist of what you want to say on your CT. Here's our MRI on this patient. Here we have a couple images from flare. This is an axial flare here. You see areas of siderosis or low signal that are from iron for blood products. Internal high intensity, there's probably also some blood products. Here on our coronal flare, again, you just see that blood products, tons of mass effect there. This is some blood sensitive imaging, in this case a GRE. You just see those blood products. Even you see blood products in the area that didn't look so bad on the CT. Uh, definitely a lot of uh, hemorrhage within this mass. Now in our pre and post contrast, we see areas of hyperintensity intrinsically. Those are the blood products, but you see a lot of heterogeneous enhancements. This is a really ugly looking mass here. Areas of necrosis or non-enhancement. And on your coronal, you just see the same thing. Really ugly mass, areas of enhancement, ill-defined sort of infiltrating margins. Uh, this is almost certainly a high-grade glioma based on, on this imaging here. This is a grade four glioblastoma. Uh, this, these glioblastomas, again, as I said, they're IDH wild-type astrocytomas. A little bit older patients than the lower-grade tumors, 40s to 70s. Uh, now they're just called uh, GVM or glioblastomas. They got rid of multiforme. Very bad survival for these patients around 15, 16 months. That edema that surrounds the, tu the tumor is not just vasogenic edema, but it has infiltrating tumor cells in there, which makes these really hard to treat. 
Now on imaging, you see a lot of enhancement. You might see areas of reduced diffusion. You might see hemorrhage or flow voids. And the treatment is maximal resection of these. So they get resection of the tumor and then they get radiation treatment of whatever is left. Uh, these patients are going to get imaging follow-up every couple of months afterwards. Uh, so this now is just a summary slide of your astrocytomas. You've got the diffuse astrocytoma all the way on the right here. Low density lesion, uh, not a lot of enhancement. Here in the middle, you see this anaplastic astrocytoma. So you have this kind of intermediate uh, grade lesion here. And then on the right, you've got an uglier looking lesion, more mass effect, some gross hemorrhage within, and that's the highest grade, the glioblastoma, or grade four astrocytoma. This is just an MRI summary showing the same thing. Again, you've got that temporal mass there. Uh, looks, looks not too bad. Uh, you've got uh, here now a little bit of enhancement there. And when you, by the time you get to the grade four lesion, you've got, uh, you've got pretty bad enhancement uh, there. So really heterogeneous looking mass in that case. Thanks for tuning in to this video about emergent imaging of astrocytomas. Hopefully you learned a little bit about how to formulate your differential based on a CT and what you might need to report on the CT. In reality, these patients are all going to go on to have MRIs. Uh, so that will be the uh, differentiating factor, but you can make yourself a little better if you go the extra mile on those CTs in the emergent setting. Be sure to tune in to the rest of the videos. We're going to talk about some of the different types of tumors, other kind of glioma, other brain lesions that you might see. Plus, we're going to talk about some of the mimics you might run into and some of the red flags you want to be alert for. Thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button below, and check out the rest of the site at learnneuroradiology.com.